actually everything I'm doing, I'm doing in real light layers. So there's one thing that I probably should mention too that I'm going to do at this point. As you can see that, well, I hope you can see anyway, that there's a lot of purple in here too. And this is still that Payne's Gray and just racing back and forth. It's Payne's Gray with a little bit of blue, but I've got to make sure that some of this color and some of this light is going to be reflected in those boots, especially in these secondary highlight areas. So I want to go in and make sure that I'm throwing a little bit of that purple and maybe even a little bit of the green in there too. So this is just um, maybe a drop of purple with um, a drop of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to mix that again a little bit. Just test spray it a little. So I can see it's a purplish gray. I want to make sure that it's not pure purple. I want to make sure that it has some of that gray in it. And then in these secondary highlights where that light's going to be reflected, I'm going to go in and just again lightly layer it. Just lightly. Then from there, a couple of drops of Payne's Gray, and I'll start to go back in, and now take those take those middle tones in some areas anyway a little bit a little bit darker. And as I start to do that, things are going to get pushed backwards now, and then I'll take them back and pull them right back out again with those erasers. Um, the next step is, is going to be another push and pull process, and uh, you'll see what happens from here, how that's going to create a little bit of depth. And the color is the reflected color, too, so that helps add a little bit of realism to it as I go along. And that may need to be adjusted you know, as, as I um, take this through and, and develop it. So the next step will be, uh, again, going back in with those erasers and colored pencils to pull out some of those areas and, and uh, create those uh, contrasts and uh, details. Okay, what I've done, I've gone back in, done some more erasing, done some more um, layering and buildup in those darker areas. And you can see it's really starting to come together a little bit now. Um, what, one thing I, want, I, I do want to do is go back in and, and start to lay in another unifying layer to help get back to some of these colors that I have up here in the um, other part of the painting. You can see some of these have a little more of a, a brownish or warmer tone to them. And I've been using cool colors so far. Now some of that's going to be reflected in this area. So I want to make sure that I go back in and lay in just a little bit of that warmer tone into those boots. And as I start to erase, I'm pulling in or I'm adding details. When I'm adding those details, I'll brush back over them to push them back a little bit. And then what I'll end up with are just the highlighted areas. It gives you a real um, wet, shiny look to that, to that boot and that fabric. So here what I'm doing, mixing in a little bit of uh, flesh tone. Again, with a little drop of that Payne's Gray. What I ended up with here was a color that's a little too gray. I'm going to spray most of that out. And go back in and add some more of the flesh color until that warms up, until that warms up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going back in and just painting back in some of that warmer tone. It usually works out to be a nice complement to the to the cooler purples and blues. So you add a little heat next to those cooler colors. And I can 
see that I'm starting to get some of this color that I used here into the skin tone in here too. Although it's a little too yellow. So I'll add a little bit of uh, sienna. And again, keeping this away from the painting a little bit, just enough to throw just a little heat back in there to make it not quite so yellow. brush out a little bit. Go back in with some more Payne's Gray to start to push back some of those areas that really wouldn't be that white or the, the highlighted areas. So I'm going to just push them back a little bit again. See what that does is it flattens that back down. So now I've gone and erased those highlights, brought them back real white, laid them back down and flattened them again so that now I can pull back those highlights again in just the areas that I want them to be where I want them to be pulled out and that's going to create those sharp highlights and textures um, are still there from the, uh, the dryer sheet. Um, the next step, that's what it's going to be. I'm going to start to go back and, and go into the darker areas again, really push them back dark, and bring out the brightest highlights now that I've got my colors and middle tones laid in. And this is, like I said, it's it's a playing process. You've got to go back and forth with it. And everybody would, any other artist may have another way of doing this or a different method. But this is the method that I've, I've been using since um, I've been airbrushing and um, it works for me. There may be other shortcuts or easier ways to do it, but I think everybody, you kind of have to um, develop your own ways and the ways that you feel comfortable doing. So that'll be the next step. I'll go ahead and uh, work on that over on my table here and uh, we'll see where this all ends up. Okay, here you can see I've removed the mask. And, and that's kind of important at this point because I want to make sure that everything is uh, unified with the other colors that are in the painting. Um, I still haven't finished. I've gone in and I've laid in a little bit of the dark area here underneath that boot, but I still will go in and pick out some more details and with colored pencil, maybe some acrylic paint, and uh, different, a variety of different erasers to pull back some of those brighter whites. But it's pretty much at a point here where I want to uh, let that go and work into other areas of the painting because they all have to relate to each other so I want to go in and work on this fabric and start to lay in some of the rocks and, and the skulls too and throw some of that color in there too. So at this point that'll conclude the tutorial for the the boots and how I do those and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for taking the time to, to view the video and uh, don't forget to stop back and see how the painting uh, turns out at the end. Okay, thanks a lot.